How many friends have you made today? Chapter 10, In the Eye of the Beholder. Anon looks over his shoulder as Aluna and Celestia follow his lead. The smile that he had before walking out of the dining hall returned to his normal neutral look. Let's face the facts, Anon didn't have a plan for what to do or where to take the princesses. He just wanted to leave the room that they were in. If he had to stay there any longer, he was gonna lose it. There were just too many emotions for him to handle in one sitting, and he found it in his best interest to get out while he was ahead. Now that he's walking in the halls of the castle, he feels as if all the pressure from earlier has been lifted from him. He still knows that Celestia would keep her word about going after Twilight, and he will admit that it kind of makes him happy to hear that she would get her comeuppance. However, it's a double-edged sword. This also means that he will have to be present and maybe even defend his case. Not to mention that he doesn't know how the ponies of Ponyville take the news. Eh, not like it matters. They don't like him anyways. Anon doesn't like complicated. Complicated things are usually bad things. He faces forward as he rubs the back of his neck. He doesn't know what to do now. Everything is so different for him. Not only on the outside, but the inside as well. He can still feel his body tremble slightly at the thought of trusting those two. He knows that they're probably the only things that he could ever trust in this world, but that still doesn't mean that he isn't weirded out by this entire thing. Celestia looks to her friend in worry. She can tell that Anon is trying to process everything that just happened a few moments ago. She, too, is having a hard time trying to think over everything that was revealed to her. She knows that Anon is at a delicate point in his life right now, so it's why she came up with a rather nice plan. She's gonna have him stay and relax here for a few more days, and when he returns to Ponyville, well, she'll be sure to go there as well. Many things need to be fixed, and she no longer trusts her friend alone with those ponies. Luna keeps her emotions behind her princess mask, her gaze never looking away from Anon. How much of a fool has she been to not have seen any of this? All the pieces were there, and yet she was too blind to see it. She has failed her friend, that much is clear. However, the time of failures will soon perish. She's made a promise to herself to watch over Anon for as long as she can manage. He's her friend, and it's high time that she protects him like one. Anon jumps a little in shock as he feels something press against him. He looks to his left and finds Luna pressed firmly against the side as they continue to walk. He notices a certain steely determination on her face as she scans the area that they're walking down. Rather than feel weird about her being so close, he actually feels a sense of ease. Knowing that she's by his side and based on her look of being ready to attack at a moment's notice, Anon feels rather protected. He then feels something press against his other side. He looks over this time to find Celestia. She gives him a gentle smile, one that he returns briefly. He can start to feel a certain swell in his heart at the actions of these two. A feeling that he hasn't felt in a very long time. He feels... safe. Perhaps thinking on it will ruin the moment for him, so he just faces forward and leads his party on. They continue down their path. However, Anon catches sight of someone that he knows. In fact, he feels his spirit lift more than before. Walking down the hall towards them is Blue Blood. Anon lifts his hand and gives him a wave. Hey, Blue. Anon says with a brief smile. Blue Blood looks at Anon and then to his aunts. They all have different expressions on their faces, but Blue Blood has the feeling that Anon looks better than he did a few hours ago. Hello. Blue Blood says as he looks at all of them. Are you going somewhere? Anon gives a nod. Yeah. Want to join us? Blue Blood will admit that he does like the idea of joining them. Perhaps they're going out in town today. He's never seen his aunt's crowd into Candlelot, with the exception of parades or a celebration of some kind. Sure. Blue Blood answers as he steps next to his auntie, Celestia. Celestia gives Blue Blood a quick nuzzle as he joins her. Luna then looks up at Anon. So, where is it that you plan to take us? She asks Anon, and Anon shrugs. Eh, I have no idea. I thought we could just walk around and kind of just stumble into a restaurant or something. Celestia feels her nerves start to kick in, the memories of her getting food poisoning that one time coming to the forefront of her mind. She wants to speak out and tell Anon how badly this could end, but she holds her tongue. Perhaps she's just overreacting. Luna, on the other hoof, actually feels her mask slip some. She feels her heart fill with a feeling that she's never felt before. Anon wishes to go out in public with her. No one, pony, or otherwise, has ever taken her out in a candlelot before. In fact, she still doesn't know what candlelot looks like. Her sister rarely leaves the castle, and that was something that shocked Luna. Before her banishment, they both went out and walked amongst the ponies on a regular basis. When Luna came back, she tried to get her sister to show her around, but she just never did. Luna tried to go out by herself, something she did many times before in the Old Kingdom, but the ponies fled in fear of her. So she too decided to stay in the castle. And now, here came Anon. He simply wishes to walk the town with her, her sister, and Blue Blood. She feels a bit of excitement build in her at the thought of going out onto the town with her close friend and her sister. 
While she does talk to Blue Blood from time to time, she will admit that she isn't as close to him as her sister is. But hey, the more the merrier, right? Here they are, out and about in the streets of Canterlot. The nun isn't surprised at all by the looks that they're getting. Here is Princess Celestia, Princess Luna, and Prince Blue Blood. And then there's Anon. It's a rather odd sight to many of the high-class ponies that walk the streets. Anon pays them little attention, though, as he looks around at everything, all the different buildings and stores. I gotta say, this place is nice. Anon says to break the tension. Celestia gives him a nod. Uh, yes, the city has stood here ever since. She stops as she looks at Luna, a certain pain still in them. Well, since my sister left. Anon understands that she's referring to when she banished her sister. He knows that staying in the same castle would have been hard. Hell, he couldn't even stay in the same room after their little talk. So he can't even imagine what she felt about the place after their fight. I must say that that is a little slice of heaven. Blue Blood says in his canterlot voice. Anon can't believe how different Blue Blood is in public. He could swear that he is looking at a different pony entirely. And rather than walking in a more slouched and slow pace, Blue Blood keeps his head high up and each step is made with practiced grace. We count many a fortnight since we fucked amongst our subjects. Luna says without a waver in her voice. But Anon can see that she's nervous. Beyond nervous, actually. The fact that she's speaking in a royal we means that she's too emotional to notice. He decides to let it slide for now. They're out in public, so there's no need to correct her on speech in front of all these ponies. Anon was gonna say something, however his eyes spotted something out of the ordinary. No, is that what I think it is? He questions to himself. What are you looking at? Celestia looks at Anon. A small grin can be seen on his face. Well, it's the best place you can imagine. Anon walks towards the place in mind, his entourage not too far behind him. The four of them stop in front of the place that's before them. Celestia feels one of her brows raised as she looks over the store. Here? She looks at Anon, who gives a small nod. Are you sure? We could head back to the castle for a meal instead. Anon shakes his head, as he gives a once-over to this old-school donut shop, the sign hanging over the building saying Donut Joe's. Well, this day can't get any weirder, so might as well embrace it. He walks into the store. An old-timey bell rings as the door hits it, and the fresh scent of donuts fills the air. I'll be with you in a moment! Anon hears someone shout from the back. He looks around to the empty store and gives a shrug as he walks over to a booth. He waves for Luna to take a seat, and she gives him a nod. Blue Blood takes a seat on the opposite side of Luna, and Anon sits next to Luna as Celestia sits across from him, next to Blue Blood. If anyone were to walk into this place and look over at them, they would admit that this is a strange sight to behold. Donut Joe, on the other hoof, feels a smile on his face at the sound of some pony entering a store. Despite being in Canterlot, he mostly gets tourists and royal guards coming around, rather than the locals. His donuts aren't refined enough for those stuck-up ponies, but he doesn't complain. He's making a decent living and is doing what he loves. He wipes the sweat off of his brows, he quickly grabs a pad and pencil. He walks out of the back and looks around for whoever came into his store. And then his mouth drops, the paper and pencil that he had falling to the ground. He quickly takes a seat on his rump and rubs both of his eyes. I is he seeing things? Sitting at a booth is not one, but both princesses, Prince Blueblood and... And, well, he isn't too sure what the other thing is, but it must be important if it's with all three of them. He regains his composure. Alright, this isn't the time to gawk or get nervous. He needs to take their orders. So... He walks up to them and forces his body still. He doesn't want to shake like a filly in front of them. Hello, I'm Donut Joe. So, what would you like? He asks. Anon rubs his chin some. He looks over at the large display that hangs over the register. It has pretty much everything that is offered here, so he knows what he wants. I'll have the glaze. Anon answers. Jelly felt for mine. Luna comes in. Sprinkles on mine. Blue Blood adds. Celestia looks to her companions, unsure how they all ended up here. Well... No need to worry now, seeing as she's already here. She wouldn't want to be rude and leave before even giving this place a try, so she looks over at the large sign with a large variety of items on display. And one does catch her eye. I would like to try your 1000 cake donut, please. Donut Joe gives her a nod as he quickly takes her orders. Alright, is that everything? He asks. Glass of milk for all of us. Anon adds. Ah, of course. Joe quickly leaves to make their orders, and he will make double sure that everything is perfect for them. Celestia looks out of the corner of her eye and spots a few ponies gawking at her through the window at their booth. She knows that it'll only be a matter of time until this ends up in the press. Luna uses her magic to quickly shut the blinds. Even though she knows that it won't stop ponies, it should give them a semblance of privacy. Celestia looks over to Anon as he looks around the store. 
He definitely looks far more relaxed than he did before. What made you come here? Celestia grabs Anon's attention, and he shrugs. Eh, it kind of reminds me of a few places from Earth. Equestria varies in similarities, this one being rather pleasant, he admits. Anon has told her many times about how things were familiar, yet so different compared to his world. She remembers the time that he told her that the weather moved on its own, and she often thinks that's why he likes the Everfree so much. A chaotic place to her, as well as her ponies, but not to Anon. It's just normal to him. Oh, I see. Celestia says calmly. Anon faces Celestia and gets a good look at her. That mask of hers is pretty good, but still not that great. He can still see small twitches on her face that tells him that she's nervous. His eyes drift over to Blue Blood as he uses his magic to play with a fork and spoon. He then looks over to Luna, who's looking at the top of the table in the blank stare. Well, this certainly won't do. Uh, so, Celestia. Celestia looks up at Anon. I was wondering what things were like before Canterlot existed. What was the Old Kingdom like? A spark of nostalgia comes to Luna as she hears Anon's question. To remember those times gives her mixed feelings. It was a time where she truly fit in, and also a time where she made her biggest mistake. Celestia, on the other hand, feels herself calm a bit more, as a genuine smile rests on her muzzle. What would you like to know? She asks. Anon scratches his chin in thought for a few minutes, and then the perfect idea comes to him. Perhaps a little revenge on Luna's prank this morning is in order, so he looks to Luna with a devious smile as he faces Celestia again. Tell me about your sister when she was a teenager. You know, I'm glad that they went to Donut Joe's instead of some fancy restaurant or maybe even just a casual diner. Because Donut Joe's seems like it's a very homey place. And when a place feels homey, that's one of the best things that a person could ask for. Now let's get on to our comforting donators. Top donators Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Magazine, Crazy Killer 557, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runeslife9852, Hansel Norman, Stephen Bingham, Taco Cat 598 Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Ponyman, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Skyuchia, Leslie Prickett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kizane 9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Needs a Life, Milan Bihenek, Von Novel, and many more comfy people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.